Hi, this is Jilly Bling. I have another project using Stippled Rose Bundle. Beautiful bundle. And here's the project. Isn't that pretty? Just a little on the inside, kind of vintagey. I know not everyone likes vintagey. Other people just love it. So I hope you like this one. It's considerably easier than the first one. The first one, um, I did coloring with the blends and I do, okay, first of all, I love me some blue flowers, but I like how crisp it is. Like there's the flower, there's the leaf colored in. I love the white edges on the flower and the leaves. This one, quite a bit easier. It's embossed in gold and using a dauber applied color. So they're just very different looks for one stamp set. This one I use some of the extra little um, dies included in the bundle um, for the leaves and put a sponge dauber on the edge of those to kind of vintage them up. This one I didn't use those. So I plan on making one more project using this bundle, but this is today's. So we'll be using Stippled Roses stamp set and dies and thoughtful expressions just for the sentiment labeled. Okay, you ready to get started? And you know, it's kind of a simple card. I hope it isn't, when I look at it, it's it's beautiful, but I hope it isn't too boring because I always like to, to do something a little extra fancy. Okay. That's it, usually my pile is huge. So this I saw online, the Stampin' um, Sash um, made a card just about like this. I made just a few minor changes, but if you looked at the two of them, you'd say, yeah, same, same card, but beautiful layout, beautiful ideas. And she does some really good, Anne, she does some really good um, vintage cards. She, she knows how to do vintage. And I'll be using this ribbon, Pecan Pie Bordered Ribbon. Oh, sparkle gems, my favorite. It's like I reserve these for special cards just because I love them so much. I haven't used too much of the black ones, but this kind of coppery gold and also the silver, they're just beautiful. So we'll be using those. And two embossing folders. Like what? And what we'll do, so this one is layered florals. This one is an online exclusive. It comes in a three pack for, I think it's $30. And I just titled it. I don't know what the real title is. It's called Basic Embossing, Basic 3D Embossing Folders. And I titled it Crosshatch because that identifies it to me. Um, but on here, here is the floral and down here is a crosshatch. So we will take our paper, cut it diagonal. You can see right there and use two different pieces. Very clever. I love that. And this big piece, I should have two big pieces. Oh, and I'll tell you the paper cut sizes too. Well, okay. I'm looking at how big this is. Yep, this is the right size. It's just a little bit smaller than the card front. So paper cut sizes, let's do it. The base is standard five and a half by eight and a half. Let's fold that. Vanilla. I don't use vanilla that much. I do like it, especially vintage. And to make a card kind of warm it up. But I say I use 90% white paper cardstock. Okay, two pieces of vanilla. And that is five and three eighths by four and an eighth. <clears throat> And that is for this piece that goes on top that's gonna to be cut diagonal and also a piece for stamping on. So the diagonal piece with your paper trimmer, put the two ends, oh, I got my paper trimmer handy. Oh, I'm going to Houston for a Stampin' Up! event and they say bring a paper trimmer. It's over there in the to be packed pile. Okay, so let's pretend like this is my paper trimmer. I'll take this paper and put that corner here in this corner um, right here and just slice it. So now we have two triangles. Does that make sense? Here they are. One of them is in the crosshatch and one of them is 3D layered florals. Okay, so we did that part. 
And when you, when, hold, hold on, when you cut and you put your pieces in here, if you just take your pieces and put them in like, okay, this one in here, that one there, run them through. If you can, take a minute to think, here's the card. Not that I did this wrong or anything. And not that it was wrong, but I didn't want a flower dipping down. I wanted the flower popped up. Because this paper is going to go right here. And if I just threw it in upside down like this, I would have an indented flower. I guess you could put it over on this side but it doesn't show up as much. Anyhow, moral to the story, just take a minute to think about your crosshatch and your flowers. Do you want it popping up or going down? Okay, we got that. And this crumb cake paper right here and crumb cake for the inside is cut to four and a quarter, five and a quarter by four. And you're like, well, what's the top one for? because it's not going to show. I'll show you. It is for putting your, um, your texture pieces on. I knew this was going to run out. It's so close. If I could squeeze some more out of it, I will though. That I'm doing. You don't need to be that sloppy. I'm just struggling with this. Okay, so I'm putting it on here just because when I did this card, I was holding it and just setting this. It's like, I'm struggling with that. And you know how hindsight is so much clearer. So I'm just gonna set that on there and then put this right about where I want it. Okay, once that one is on, this one is easy. Line up this corner and line up that corner. Good, good. Why I have a gap in here every time, I don't know. It's probably from the thickness of the popped up flower, but that's gonna be covered up with beautifulness, so it's fine. And if you happen to have your pieces that are not exactly, um, you can't tell in there. Oh, that's pretty good. You could just take your snips and cut it off. Okay, so we're gonna vintage that. Did we get through all these pieces? Base, two vanillas, we have to stamp stuff and heat emboss it. Two crumbs, vanilla inside is five and an eighth. This one right here, five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. Sea foam, it should be three pieces. I added on an extra little bit. Three pieces of sea foam, and I'm gonna hold this up with the project here in about a minute. Um, sea foam. These three pieces, two and an eighth by one and three quarters, and that's for these leaves and also for some leaves for the inside. And the words are two and three quarters by two and three quarters, which is this right here. Okay, so here we go. Get ready to do your screenshot. Those are the sizes for this vintagey stippled roses card. Okay, we did it. Let's stamp. I like to stamp. So I'm going to do this in Versamark, put it into gold powder with this big one. Sometimes when it's big, it's kind of hard to hold it. So all you demonstrators, who is going to Houston on stage is like a three day event. It's going to be so fun. I'm looking forward to it. I'm not looking forward to getting up super early. I had flight reservations and then they got changed. And I'm like, no, I'm not leaving that early. So then I looked up, what does the airline Southwest, what else do they have to offer? It's like, well, I guess I'm leaving that early. It's funny, I, I was sick like 10 days ago and I kept saying in my head, I guess it's good I'm sick now, because I won't be sick then. Yay! Just a cold. Just a cold. But that's the first one of the year. Before I got sick, I was just so proud. I even said to my doctor, 
I don't know what's going on, but it's really good. And once you know it, a week later, yeah. Isn't that pretty? Gold embossing powder. Stampin' Up's embossing powder, particularly their metallics, are beautiful. Just beautiful. For a while, before I knew better, I was using an imposter. Um, imposter's probably the wrong word. A knockoff. Or, let me put it this way, not the best. It wasn't Stampin' Up embossing powder. And I just thought that's how it always goes. But then when I used the Stampin' Up embossing powder, it's so bright, it's beautiful. So I'm thinking I should take my brush and brush that off, but I'm going to cut it so close that you won't even notice it. I should have used my embossing buddy. It's sitting right there. How's that look? Okay, while I'm at it, I should do the words for the front. And I have them done. Okay, so cutting out using the dies leaves a little bit more of a white border than I want. So I hand cut, which worked out. You can see right here. If this was a bit bigger, it just, it wouldn't become one unit. It would be a definite separation. So I hand cut out these big one and two little ones. The two little ones, one is for here and another one is for here. Okay, so I'm cutting behind the scenes. Do you like that? Ta -da! So those are cut out. So to apply color, we're gonna use daubers. Daubers for this whole project. Daubers for everything. So to color it, I'm gonna start with Moody Mauve. Dauber, and just put a bit in the center of each flower. The less ink that's on it, the softer it gets. But sometimes, like, do you want it like really dark? I think these are just kind of medium. Just a hint of color, and then there's these buds. If you want, you can put color on the buds. And because you're using daubers, there's no way you can be, you could go for perfection. Using daubers, it doesn't work like that. And I just got ink right there on the outside. Don't like it, but good thing about this, because at first I was stressing with that, good thing is we're going to put crumb cake around the whole outside edge. So if you go outside the lines, no problem. We're going to vintage it. Okay, so that was mauve. Next is fresh freesia. Fresh freesia to kind of brighten it up. And On these, you can't tell. Oh, that one I really got pressure to the edge. I'm leaving a little bit of a white border around the outside of the flower. I think this bud is just going to have to be green. But I want to make sure that you could definitely see there's mauve and then there's um, freesia.
at least in a few places. Aren't these like vintage, beautiful colors? Okay, that one I went crazy. Good thing for that crumb cake coming up. I'm trying to tip it a little bit so that I get the edge or maybe a little bit more control. And then I'll do it the same with the greens. I'm going to put two different greens on here. And looking at my little color chart over there, I want to use the soft seat foam because it matches the die cut um, leaves. And then I was like, well, what other colors like a deeper hue to that? And I came up with Mossy Meadow. So let's do Mossy Meadow. And then next for the green leaves. See them. Here's Mossy Meadow. And I'm going to get it just down at the base of the leaves. And I'm going to try not to, haha, <laughs> not to go into the flower, which I just did, but that's, that's okay. This is vintage. But you see how quick it's all coming together? It's like we're getting color on those. Now this one, I'm going to try to leave that little white border of the flower petal. I'm going to try. Going to try on all of them. You can see it's kind of kind of random, but that's what makes it look so soft. And the gold is certainly elegant. bit of green and now mossy meadow to kind of fill in that's crumb cake my little label got a bit discolored I don't know why it's not like I keep it in the sun oh no. so this I'm going to try to fill in a little bit more of the leaf I guess you could do this really dark. That might accentuate the sloppiness of it though. So this is Avid Stampers. If you buy the bundle through me um, between today and the end of day, March 25th, I would love to send you the three card kits for free. For free. So you saw the blue one, there's this one, and I'm gonna do one more with vellum, something. Okay, so now, finally, lots of crumb cake. This one, either my pad is dry, or this just isn't holding the ink. It looks really pretty, looks brand new. Maybe I'll try a different crumb cake pad. Crumb cake pads are all busy. Okay, persevere. So just kind of brush it. So see how I'm holding it and I'm brushing kind of downward? I like the effect of that. Because if you take, I'm going to turn it on the other side and rub, which is a little bit more convenient. It's pretty and soft, but you get kind of a bar, a ring all around it. This way it's really graduated with the color. There's that, then there's that. So, just minor little differences. Okay, that one is done. The vintage up these flowers. It's nice that the gold embossing powder it um, resists the ink. 
so it remi remains nice and bright. Okay, can you tell the difference? Or does it just look dirtier? I guess, I guess it depends on do you like vintage or not. Okay, so I went green over the edge there. Can't tell anymore. Went green way over the edge here. Fix that. So for the little seafoam leaves that we're going to cut out using the die, which is an adorable die. These dies are so pretty. The extra dies. Okay, that one cuts out those words. But this die and this one that we're going to use on the inside, do you see the detail on those? They're just beautiful. And you could use these, these little branches. Like even if you just had a card with designer paper, you put a word label on it. Maybe you could have it double layered. Then you could have these things spritzing out and then put a few bling around it. That's all it would take to make a beautiful card. Oh, and look at this one. This one is really pretty. Then there's a couple of different types of flowers. Not sure how to use those yet. Okay, back to task. Covering up all my sponging wayward color. Cover up that freesia. I've noticed that when I start using a color, guess what color I choose to wear? Every time. I wonder if yesterday when I was doing the blue card, that one is just so pretty. I wonder if I was wearing blue. Probably. The next one is pink and vellum. Better be a springtime day. We're in pink and white. Ooh, look how much freesia I got over on there. Okay, after doing this, oh, I have to cut out the leaves and vintage those and vintage the card front and the inside. Little bud. Okay, I think that's good. So these pieces, I'm gonna do two of the leaf and one of this crazy, one, two, three, four, five, six, six-sided leaf thing. So two of these, one of that. And these get sponged. They're really delicate though. Well, they might have to be this type of sponging. Yeah, that's working. And I think these little flower things are going to be covered up by the flower on the inside, like this flower here. So I'm not worrying about getting color on those. Does it look okay? And this is very delicate too. Oh, you know what? Let me try something. I did this on with the butterfly before because I'm looking at that and it's like, oh, that's kind of cute. Okay, let me try this. Hold it in place. Keep it right there. Now I'm worried more about what it's doing to the vanilla paper rather than getting color on my seafoam pieces. Oh, I've got a good feel in here. Okay, you ready? Oh, that's pretty. Okay, maybe just a little bit more. That means I'm going to have to put more color on there, which is fine. I'm going to try to get into that little slit. 
Okay, so one card is going to have fancy, fancy inside. And the first card, the sample. Oh, isn't that pretty? <coughs> okay. Maybe a little. Oh, because I have more to do. I'm going to do some more. Okay, sorry about that. I have a cough drop going, so this wouldn't happen. Okay. Oh, the outside. <coughs> Sorry about that. Okay, let's get this sponged. Okay, I'm recovering now. You know, it makes it worse when you try to hold back the cough. Well, I didn't hold it back very good there. But at least I don't feel miserable and I'm not I'm not viral or anything like that. Sponge in. Daubers. I love daubers. I have one for every color. Okay, we got that. That. The inside paper. I'm gonna sponge all around the outside edge. Okay, so at the end, I'll hold up the one with the fancy inside and the sample. Tell me which one you like. I kind of want to do a little bit more, but let me see. Do these, like this one, it, need, it, it needs more. Do I dare? Hold on. After that cough fit, you know. Okay, all better. Cough is gone. We're, we're, it's it's all good now. There it is. I think we're done with sponging. So now to assemble this. This gets this one. And when you look at that, see how there's an opening here, here, but a bigger opening there. I think in that could go right here. Oh, I know, I know. Or it could go like this. And then this can cover up. I don't want it to cover up too much. After all that work, maybe like that. These these leaves, I don't even know that that they go with um with this flower. As a matter of fact, I know roses. I'm not sure where those these leaves are coming from. That must be some kind of imposter plant coming into the rose garden. I need to check on that. Okay, so that will just go there, and I just want some of these to show. Host code, if you want to order anything, if you use the host code, it's appreciated. Okay, and now I'm going to use liquid glue to stick this down. Right 
up there. Okay, inside, <clears throat> we are set. So I'll just kind of let that dry a bit. Or I guess I could put it in. Oh, so Tony tries to do, he's been doing this for a while. He tries to do keto. So we have a trip coming up. And he always tries to do it. And also, he's getting a new hip. I don't know if he wants me telling everyone that. But he's getting a new hip. And he's trying to be all healthy and stuff. So he did not waffles. He did chaffles. Are you like, uh, what's a chaffle? That's what I'm saying. He's done this once before. He even got a um, special waffle maker. And, he, and it's like a little individual one. It's about this big. And it's for him to make his chaffle. So a chaffle is using almond flour rather than regular flour. So that's kind of keto. And instead of it being, oh, let's put butter and syrup on it, which in my head I'm like, yeah. It, um... It's more of a savory, or maybe that's just the way he chose to do it. Um, and the first time he just put egg in there and um, cheese, and it was okay. Well, just think, if you made, it's not even an omelet, and it had egg, cheese, and almond flour, which I'm fine with that, but it's just kind of boring. He goes, do you want butter on it? And I'm like, no, no, it's okay. Um, but today, when he made it, he went and he got some ham. He does all the grocery shopping. I'm going to need a double. I'll start with the double bowl. How much is left? But I have another one. So ham, but just a little bit. And um, he put in, of course, cheese and pepper. A red and orange pepper. Oh my gosh, it was so good this time. I said, now this is a good one. I'm like, yeah, this one is better. Just because he had a little more flavor in it. But he's always trying something. I love that. If it were up to me, I'd probably be eating, well, I know how it is. Oatmeal or yogurt. Okay, have a little bit more. So this is just gonna wrap around, maybe about there. Sorry about that earlier coffin. It's just the pit. When you're getting over a cold, do you go through that too? I know Tony's been coughing too, but he had it before, I think he gave me this cold. But it's just, it's, it's embarrassing. That's just embarrassing. Um, I'm going to put this on with dimensionals. And I'll probably use up all those. So I'm going to put one here to make sure the ribbon doesn't go anywhere. Another one. Well, I certainly am using them up. But I have more. I use dimensional so much, I know the item numbers. Would you like the item number for regular dimensionals? 104430. And I think the small ones are 144108. Would you like some white paper? 159276. Okay, that's all I know. And you could ask me those anytime. If you're going to on stage, we can meet with a handshake, oh, you might think I'm sick, with a hello and a, do you know the number four? And we can exchange favorite numbers. Yeah. Okay, so this is going to go on here. Where is, oh, that one's pretty. And look at how the blue in color bling match. Yeah, very pretty. But then there's these sparkles too. Oh, it's good to be us. Okay, so this one, the big flower, 
is going to go to the top. And I'll start out with a few dimensionals, and then I'll put in more after I get all these other little pieces tucked in. Okay, so this one will go right about, and I'm trying to leave room at the top for my lovely seafoam antiqued um, leaves. Okay, so that goes there. This one is probably not going to be interrupted, so it gets three dimensionals. Right about here. What am I covering up? Maybe I could make more of the flower show. Okay. And these little cuteness will go on with glue. And I'll put just a little bit of glue on, and then I'll go back and really tack it down after I get this all set. Like where, what's going to go where. So this one I want it. Well, I'm going to end up, okay. Because see, I'm about to tuck it in. I'm like, those are going to be completely, these two leaves are going to be completely hidden. I like those leaves. They have glue on them, so I need to be careful. Do I have glue on any? No. Okay, so I'll get glue on this in a minute. That's going to go right about here. But these, this little, that looks like a little plant. I'm going to take it. Oh, I'm getting glue everywhere. That can be right here. Just because they're so cute. It's just like a little hidden of something. Okay, back to this one. right about there. I want to see as much as possible of it because it's just so cute. Okay, now this one, am I going to have to, it should be like a big one sticking out there. Well, how about the words? The words are going to go on, that's going to cover up that little seam. Yep, I plan on that. That could go right about there. This could go right here. Oh, it's so pretty. This can do its put your arms up or or put this downward and then these can oh that's better okay how about the little ones could go over here and the big one can go up there but is the big one going to be seen whoever gets these cards i certainly hope they don't throw them away there's too much thought that goes in on them. Okay, so this will go, I didn't stick that down, right about here. Dry. Okay. And this can go, oh, that looks good. And that'll cover up that seam thing too. There. Cover up the seam a little. There we go. Okay. This goes on flat. I have to use lots of glue because there's so much texture from that textured floral embossing folder. And that just kind of gets tucked into there. Okay, I think it's looking good. So the bow will go on with a glue dot and then liquid glue. Maybe this one could go kind of at an angle, like right over here. This one is higher. Oh, and I put the green down there. Okay. Well, there. Do it however you like it. Um, and then I'm going to put a glue dot underneath the ribbon. I will put glue under there, but see how this whole thing shifts and kind of moves? So I'm gonna put it right underneath that band of ribbon that wraps around the whole thing. So now it's not gonna move, but 
glue. Once it dries clear and hard, stuff isn't moving. Okay, so got that. Now I need a few more dimensionals because everything is kind of floating. I think all that's being held on just by two dimensionals. I can have that. I think we need more like 10. This little bud is hiding. Well, yeah, that's just how it is. Two more. Okay, and then bling. Trim up these little things. In December, I decided, or I tried a new pair of snips, and I decided from this point on, every December, I'm getting me new snips. And here we are in March, and I'm still loving my new snips. So if ever you have a ribbon that might fray, if you do just a little bit of glue on the edge, which will soak into the fibers, it just won't fray. Because nobody likes a fraying ribbon. That'll make the whole project look, ugh. Oh, it's tired. I guess I'll make it look vintagey. Okay, and then bling. Oh, it's so pretty. Get glue all over everything. Okay, bling, bling, bling. I'm going to do five of them. I'll do... This one has three little ones and two big ones. Let's do the opposite. That's all black and silver. So this one is going to get three big ones. Aren't they pretty? One, two, three, and then two little ones. Okay, so that's it. We did it. Isn't that pretty? Okay. If you haven't already hit the like and subscribe button, and I hope you have a great day. Let me know if you have any questions about getting the card kits for free. Okay.